Last week, GoPro announced the Hero 12 Black with features such as the 4K Max Lens Mod 2.0, far better battery life over the previous model, and more powerful image control features such as GP Log, amongst other things. But what really is the Hero 12 Black, and is there any truth to the idea that it's simply a firmware upgraded Hero 11? But before I delve into my thoughts on this, if you like my channel, please do like and subscribe. It means a lot when you do, and it helps drive me to create more content. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the whys and wherefores of this year's Hero 12 release. Previously, GoPro cameras have had hardware improvements from model to model, which is why the Hero 7 had Hypersmooth and the Hero 6 did not. Both cameras used the same GP1 processor and there was speculation at the time that the Hero 7 was simply a firmware upgraded Hero 6. The reality was that the Hero 7 did have hardware differences, such as more RAM, which allowed it to perform the hypersmooth processing that the Hero 6 simply wasn't capable of. Likewise, although the Hero 11 looks the same as a Hero 10, there are in fact lots of physical changes inside to make the thermal performance better, for example. However, it turns out that the Hero 12 apparently does not have any hardware differences from the Hero 11. I can feel the temperature rise amongst my viewers as I record this, but is this really a good or a bad thing? Regardless of what you think about this, the Hero 12 does have more capabilities than the Hero 11, and I'm not here to offer my opinion on the strategy either way, you can make up your own minds, and also simply because it is what it is. I doubt GoPro is the first company to do this. But I want to offer you some thoughts and insights as to why GoPro might have taken this strategy for this year when it hasn't done so before. Although on the surface GoPro might appear as a big company, it is in fact quite small comparatively and close-knit. I know many of the people in the company and I can say that it is one of the most friendly and uncorporate companies I've ever dealt with. A large percentage of GoPro's employees are outdoors enthusiasts and they love using the products that the company produces. There's a genuine enthusiasm amongst them. It's something I don't often encounter with camera companies, which usually consist of very corporate people. Friendly and good to deal with, yes, but GoPro is very different from any other company that I deal with. Therefore, I make no bones about the fact that I have a lot of time for GoPro. When my partner passed away, it was the only company amongst a long list of companies that I deal with that sent me flowers and checked up on me to see how I was doing, which was hugely appreciated. I have absolutely no doubt that Nick Woodman has a hard head when it comes to doing business, but what I want to emphasise is that GoPro is a much smaller, tighter team than most other camera companies, which is great, but it also has a downside. Currently, GoPro doesn't have the same resources as a company like DJI. To put this into perspective, GoPro employs only 877 people worldwide. Put that up against DJI's 14,000 employees and you can see how the two companies diversify hugely in terms of what might be possible for product development resources. After the debacle with the Karma drone, which led to huge numbers of layoffs from the company and a complete restructuring, GoPro is now quite wary of diluting its product lines too much. It doesn't want a repeat of that scenario, and with less resources in terms of sheer team size, it needs to make sure that it puts its focus into areas that will bring a real benefit. In other words, developing a brand new Mac 360 camera alongside an all new design of Hero camera would have been a huge undertaking and would dilute available development resources too much. So my hunch is that this year GoPro decided to focus most of its efforts into finishing the new Mac 360 camera, which has likely benefited the Hero 12 in the form of the Max Lens Mod 2.0. As I posited in another video, the Max Lens Mod 2.0 is effectively one half of a 360 camera with its 177 degree field of view. The fact that the Hero 12 can record 4K60 using it is a strong sign that the new Max 360 camera will be capable of 4K overcapture. That is to say, it will be able to produce a true 4K output once the 360 image has been reframed, something that isn't currently possible in any other consumer 360 camera. But there's something else. The Hero 12 can record 4K60 with the Max Lens Mod 2.0, but other features are locked out, such as GP Log, at least at the moment. It could be possible that we're seeing the limitations of the GP2 processor, and that opens up another question. 
Will the Max 362 use two GP2 processors, which would use more power, particularly combined with the need for two sensors, or will it employ a brand new processor? Given that we're unlikely to see the Max 362 until next year, if I were a betting man, I would say that there's a strong chance of a new processor being used, which will then in turn make the Hero 13 a much more significant release next year. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the matter, and I'd be interested to hear yours in the comments below. And as I said earlier, if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel and click the notification icon.